let's go out to the frontier, one of our favorite conferences to talk about mm. on this particular program. Carroll College, they play host to Montana Tech. This one, just uh, as exciting as usual, I guess. Talk about another late comeback, uh, so to speak, in this one. 30-7, to Montana Tech heading uh, into the fourth quarter. Carroll would have a couple scores to make it semi-interesting, but uh, still a pretty convincing win for the Ore Diggers. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, for 80% of this game, this was all Montana Tech. Carroll obviously taking advantage of Montana Tech, maybe taking the foot off the gas halfway through the fourth quarter, which when you're up 30-7, to not ideal, but I could see why that happens. But on the day for Montana Tech, their defense really showed out for most of this game. Anthony Oaks at the defensive line for them had six tackles, and three of those were sacks, which is, holy cow, that's really good. Um, also on the flip side, Carroll College was also playing some pretty solid defense. I know Montana Tech got out to an early lead, but once uh, Carroll's defense kind of locked it in, they did really well. Uh, Bray, excuse me, Braden Orlandi for Carroll College, their DB, had nine tackles, a tackle for loss, and an interception, still contributing on that side of Hello. the ball, keeping a minute. And obviously the late score was snuffed out by Montana Tech. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, I wouldn't say there was a lot of uh, – Big place happening, but it kind of was a ground and pound, like good old fashioned football type of day. It was a battle of the running backs. Obviously, Lander Smith, who we talked about last week, had 29 attempts for Montana Tech, 110 yards, 3.8 yards per carry. Not ideal, but you're giving him the rock enough to where he's getting okay yardage, um, you know, and they won off the back of that. So good for them. And also, Carroll, you know, their running back, Mr. Ford, had 20 attempts, 144 yards, 7.2 yards per carry, much more efficient day like on that. the ground for him, and a touchdown. So it was, uh, it was old school, old fashioned football, just how we like it. It's wonderful. Cannibalism in the frontier once again. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, part of those points for the Ore Diggers early came off of that block punt that we saw in the highlights yep. here a little bit uh, just a bit ago. And they obviously able to capitalize a touchdown off of those points. That's a big turning point in the game where, you know, every possession obviously matters in, in, in any football game. But in this one, particularly, when you have a blunder mm -hmm. like that on special teams, is not something to hang your hat on. And when I'm looking at these clips, man, watching the stadium and the atmosphere, I had to do a double check of uh, the attendance just under 6,000. For this yeah. one, you couldn't convince me that this was eight or nine, the way this <laughs> stadium looks right now. They got people lining the hill. This place looks like a really awesome atmosphere. Uh, and uh, you go in and kind of win in that environment says a lot about this squad. Absolutely. Carroll is one of those classic NAIA programs, man. You talk about a committed fan base there. Um, it is incredible. Just the, sh the turnout they get, the support they get. They're always playing in big games. This is like one of their down years, and they're receiving votes and competing against the top teams in the country. This is a storied program, and for Montana Tech to go in there like they did and convincingly win for most of the game, like, yep, pretty impressive stuff from them. So I, I like seeing how Montana Tech is building upon the success they had last week against Georgetown. They look really good. They're rolling. And Carroll, I think, too, can uh, bounce back from this. They're a really good football team. And something tells me we're going to be talking about this Ore Digger squad a lot in the coming yep. weeks. Um, Eastern Oregon on the road this coming week, but then you go at number 10, College of Idaho, in a matchup that we've come to expect uh, fireworks in. Uh, back at home for homecoming at Southern Oregon, and then back on the road, number 8, Montana Western. This yep. has got to be up there for one of the tougher schedules across all of the NAIA because – and you know most of these games coming into the year, but then you add a game like a Georgetown, like that kind yep. of deal, just to supplement what's already a really uh, beefy in-conference frontier schedule. We're going to be talking a lot about that squad.